and there's also quite some print material in the back. So hopefully, by hearing us and you know reading the materials, uh, you can you know get an idea of what this is all about. Um, so first about me, my name is Peggy Jensen. I I work in the German department. I teach German, and uh, the German department has been having a partnership with Cultural Vistas for over ten years. Um, Cultural Vistas is an um, internship exchange organization based in New York. Um, Cultural Vistas originally grew out of um, a German exchange organization, so many uh, programs that Cultural Vistas offers are still um, to and from Germany, but um, um, Cultural Vistas offers much more than that, and um, last year um, we served about 5,000 individuals from over 100 countries on both inbound and outbound programs. So um, what is interesting for us tonight are the outbound programs, of course, are the programs that are available to you to go abroad. And um, um, just so you get an idea, the headquarters of Cultural Vistas is in New York, but um, there's also a large office in Maryland, one is in Washington, D.C., there's a large office in Berlin, it's a new office, and a tiny little office here at the University of Michigan in the Modern Languages Building, which is my office. Um, so the programs that I wanted to um, introduce to you today are five. Um, three of those um, is what we call scholarship or fellowship programs, meaning that um, they are competitive programs, um, but they also mean that if you are successful with your application, you get money instead of paying money. Um, the three programs that um, we want to talk about is um, the Congress Bundestag Youth Exchange for Young Professionals in Germany, which is a full year program, then the Cultural Vistas Fellowship Program in Germany, Singapore, and Argentina. This is a summer internship program. Um, um, focusing on the fields of sustainability and envir environment. And uh, MGIP, which is a program in Germany, um, particularly for those students with an interest in public policy, international relations, um, government, and so on. And then um, two placement programs that I also want to introduce to you. Um, is Ayesta International. As the name says, this program could potentially bring you to 80 different countries in the world. And then also internship placement programs in Germany, Spain, and um, Argentina, and Chile. Now, the placement programs are fee-based programs, which means you pay a fee in order for cultural business to provide a variety of services. Um, and then we have um, three students with us today, Luke, uh, um, Jamie, and Ryan, and they will also share their experience and their stories with you so that it doesn't, you know, isn't just dry facts and deadlines and eligibility criteria. The first program is one of the oldest programs that Cultural Vistas offers. It's um, the Congress Bundestag Youth Exchange for Young Professionals in Germany. Now, the name is a little bit misleading because um, participants, and there are 75 participants to the program every year, do not intern with the German government or the US government, but uh, internships are um, pretty much in all fields. And the program is also not just about an internship in Germany, it has uh, three components, it's a full year program, so uh, participants would start with a language course, a two month language course in Germany, which also means that you don't have to speak German when you apply for it. Um, you would then attend a German college or university or college of applied sciences for four months and then you would do a um, five month internship. Now, um, Congress Bundestag, why the name? Um, it's because the US and the German government sponsor the program and they have been doing that since 1984 so that every year 75 young Americans can go, can go to Germany. And I really say young Americans because you shouldn't be older than 24. So it's one of the programs that's really geared towards younger students um, um, with the purpose to give you a comprehensive view of Germany. Um, so every year 75 young Americans go to Germany and 75 young Germans come to the United States. So we currently have two CBYX participants, German participants in Michigan. Um, and uh, the scholarship includes a lot. It starts with the flight, uh, the language courses, or the language course, um, the college 
it's paid for, although it's not expensive in Germany, but still, you know, uh, uh, that's part of the program. Um, if your internship will be an unpaid internship, uh, you get a living stipend for the second phase of the program. Um, so really, um, this is a very, um, you know, very good program. But as I mentioned, it is competitive. Uh, we receive about 300 to 400 applications and 75 students are chosen every year. Um, the application deadline is coming up soon on December 1st. And uh, a couple of years ago, Ryan um, was where you are now. He applied to the program and he was successful and spent a year in Germany. And he wants to tell you a little bit more about it. So I'll give you a little background about myself. Um, like Peggy just said, I was in your shoes about years ago. Damn, I'm old. Um, yeah, I graduated from Michigan my bachelor's in 2009, um, and I was accepting the program um, to go live abroad in Germany. It was my first experience abroad. Uh, the program's kind of nice because even if you have done a semester abroad, done a summer abroad, um, they don't rule you out. So there are actually a lot of people that already spent some time in Germany. Um, but yeah, more about me. I'm from Dearborn. Uh, just about 45 minutes away from here. I came to Ann Arbor, the furthest I'd ever been away from home for an extended period of time was half an hour away, 45 minutes. So moving to Germany was a big step. Um, I'd been there a couple times to visit friends and relatives, or not relatives, my brother, while he was studying abroad. But other than that, I had no long-term uh, international experience. Uh, that stupid picture of me right there is Frühlingsfest. Um, Germany is well known for its beer festivals, and that was one of the only pictures I could find of me uh, presentable for this. <laughs> So I did the Congress Bundestag in 2009-2010. Uh, Peggy gave a brief overview of it, um, going through what it is of um, language school, then a semester at the university to really improve the language skills, and then a five-month internship. Um, and this program is honestly it's just awesome because you don't pay anything out of pocket aside from entertainment and personal travel. So your flight over to Germany is covered, your housing is covered, you get a living stipend um, to support the day-to-day. And the living situation varies. You can request one or the other, whether it be uh, living with a host family, living um, in student dorms, or even uh, in an apartment. Um, it's not always guaranteed, but there is an option and you can request one. Um, so it really gives you the opportunity to explore all facets of German life. Um, the other good thing about it is being a full year and going through all the different areas. Um, it's not the same, or it's a little bit better than, I guess, just spending a summer there and uh, just getting to see the work life. You get to see everything. You get to live with the family. Um, go to the university, see what studying there is like. It's vastly different from here. Um, when I was there at the university, they were protesting because they raised the fees for a semester from, I believe, 5 euros to 55 euros. And I walked through the protest line just laughing because I explained to them what tuition here cost and they couldn't believe it. Um, finally, uh, there's four seminars. Like she said, there's 75 people that go abroad, um, which is really nice because Germany's not that big. It's probably about the size of Michigan, maybe a little bigger, if I can correct my fact. Um, but there's 75 of you, so you make a lot of good friends. And the nice thing is is that the language schools are located in three different places, so you get to know a lot of people really well. And then for the university and the internship, you spread all around Germany. Um, that being said, you know people across the entire country. So if you want to go visit Berlin or if you want to go visit Munich, you have a name or even a friend there. You have a place to stay, so you really have an opportunity to see the whole country, um, I guess, pretty cheaply. Um, next, a little bit about my year. Um, when I went over there, I went to language school in Cologne, which is up in the northwest. Um, that was two months, and there were, I think, 40 of us from the 75 in this one place. Uh, the downside to that was there were 40 of us in one small language school that had about 65 people together, so the main language was English. We didn't learn much. Um, then after two months, I, was, I went over to eastern Germany, uh, a city called Magdeburg. That was an experience all by itself. Um, I don't know if you know that much history about uh, Eastern Germany or East and West Germany. Magdeburg is a city that's still back in the 60s and 70s. It was uh, an interesting experience to say the least. Um, I lived with the host family there. It was very interesting, especially they would tell stories about, you know, they would talk about East Germany, which was a, kind of a Soviet area or a Soviet country, and they would start stories with, oh, back in the, uh, in the East German times, it was so wonderful because everything was free we get. You know, we'd work, but we'd get everything, and it was just, it would blow my mind to hear people talking about communism in that light. Um, finally, I kind of flipped the 180 and went from communism down to work for Mercedes for my internship. Um, I was at the headquarters in Stuttgart. That was another interesting experience because the apartment I had, it wasn't just a private apartment for myself, it was actually with two German students. 
Um, and it's really interesting over there um, because the apartments, I guess it, the only way you can compare it to is, I guess, Craigslist here looking for an open room, but in Germany it's perfectly normal. And um, so you just go on these interviews to see if the people like you, if you like the people, and if you like the apartment. So I actually moved down to Stuttgart um, and was staying in a hotel, and my internship started on Monday. I moved down on Friday. Went to about 30 of these interviews, and luckily by Sunday night I had found a place to live to go to work on Monday morning. Um, overall, it's, it's just an amazing experience because you move over there, you have two suitcases on the plane, maybe a carry-on, um, and you move around, and it's, for me it was just crazy because I had spent my whole life in Michigan, and then to kind of drop everything you have, and now you can move from place to place every two months with all your, like, not worldly possessions, but everything you have with you. Um, and it just, now that's kind of how I still live my life. Um, so after this program, um, the effects or the benefits afterwards, uh, I came home, I actually had my first phone interview. There was a German-American firm I found in Detroit. I had my first phone interview while I was still in Germany, sitting on a suitcase, waiting at the airport. Um, I had a job within a few days of getting back home. And the first question when I went to the office, uh, the owner asked me, you know, how soon can you go back to Germany? And I was the first American in the company that could speak German that had lived there. And uh, they, wanted, they had probably 10 to 20 Germans every year coming over to work on our side, and they wanted to send a Ger or an American back to Germany to show what we could do. Um, so I spent another year and a half in Stuttgart. Um, I just got back in the beginning of July. Uh, it was July. I made sure I was home for the 4th of July because as long as I lived in Germany, I was always very clear that I was still an American. Um, but then I got a phone call about two days later, and they had a new project for me in Ireland. And because I had this mentality of I can fit my life in two suitcases, I went back over to Ireland for two months, and then I moved straight from Ireland uh, to my apartment here to go back for my master's degree. Um, so this program, it really just, I had traveled a little bit, but after living abroad for an entire year, it really just makes it where you really don't feel any limits. Like, I could pack for moving abroad for two months in 72 hours, and it was not an issue. Um, it really just kind of opens up your eyes and sees, or makes you see uh, how easy you can travel and see different things, and it's just extremely interesting. Um, the other benefit, I kind of touched on it, that you have friends all throughout Germany. Well, now I have friends all throughout Germany, and there are a lot of people uh, like myself who went back. Um, so while I was over there, I had friends in Berlin, or sorry, when I went back, I had friends that had gone back and were in Berlin, uh, one in Belgium. So I had places to visit all throughout Europe, and now I have friends throughout the entire U.S. It's kind of the same as, I guess, people you meet here and friends you know through college. Um, but now they're split not just in the U.S., but uh, also in Germany. Um, and really the last part is since between undergrad and graduate school, I worked for a couple of years, but at the same time my life was just a Euro trip. And I couldn't have done that without this program. Um, and really being able to speak German has been the absolute best thing for me. Um, in any work situation, it's really just been, um, and especially in interviews, if this is on your resume, people see it, and those instantly the first question is they'll ask you about a year abroad. Um, yeah, I can't say enough about what it's like. Um, are we can do questions now or after? Maybe after. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Thank you. Thank you, Ryan. Mm -hmm. particularly nice to have Ryan with us in the panel t today because he can give you, you know, a perspective from someone who was, who did it four years ago and, uh, you know, I'm glad you talked a little bit about the time between between your program and, and now. Um, the next fellowship program um, is a short-term program. Uh, the Cultural Vistas Fellowship Program in Germany, Argentina, and Singapore. Now the money for this comes out of the Cultural Vistas um, Scholarship Fund. And um, Cultural Vistas decided last year that uh, something that we would really like to support is the um, you know, internships, professional experience in the field of sustainability and the environment. So um, the fellowship program was created um, and it allows 12 students, um, US students, to um, go to four different countries, uh, sorry, to three different countries, Argentina, Singapore, and Germany. Um, for, if, if you're interested in the Germany, program, you should speak German. For Argentina, you should speak some Spanish. If you're more opting for the Singapore options, no language skills are required other than English. 
Um, it is uh, basically a two-month internship in um, June and July, May, June, July, uh, framed by other um, activities like a, a virtual learning component before you leave the United States, a seminar after you come back from your internship, um, and the idea is also that the 12 fellows keep in touch with each other throughout the program. Um, now the benefits are pretty much all program related costs including the flight, including the seminars, um, um, the internship placements, insurance, and um, this program, as the Congress Bundestag Youth Exchange program, is only open to U.S. citizens. Um, and um, yeah, the deadline is still a little bit uh, ahead. It will be coming up in February, but it never hurts to think about it. And Jamie um, was in Argentina last summer and wants to share her story with you. Actually, I put a link here. Okay, well I can start just a little bit about it. Um, so I'm a junior currently right now. Um, I went to Argentina, so that requires, they say, two years of Spanish, but definitely any additional Spanish you have is helpful. And the theme was sustainability. And so just to say a note about this, it doesn't require that you are like a pipe major or anything like that. Um, I'm a business student who just had like this interest in sustainability since I was in high school, and I was able to talk about like things I'd done or like some of my passions. So it's definitely not required that you are um, pursuing sustainability as your education, but just that it's something that you really care about or think about contributing and like hopefully something that you'd want to be part of your career in the future. Um, uh, sorry. That's fine. So the presentation I'm going to give is actually um, a presentation I had to give to Cultural Vistas at the end because this experience is sort of like a leadership or like development experience. So before you go, you're working with people who are in your country. So. My year, there was actually only seven fellows, so there was only one other person who went to Argentina with me. So you are doing presentations with them. Um, you're doing like you're doing presentations, and so this is like what I gave at the end of my. No, it's fine. How many of you do speak Spanish? Awesome. Okay. And how many German? Oh, okay. And another question, how many um, of you are engineers or have some other technical background? Okay. Okay. Good. Thank you. You're playing the I in the No, that's my name. I mean, Prezzies are cool if they work. Mm -hmm. um. Okay. Um, so, just to start, um, about me before, like I was saying, um, I'd had an exchange student live in my house when I was really young. My language skills were basically what you can learn in the classroom. I'd never gone abroad. I'd never like had to talk to survive or anything like that. Um, I'd just taken Spanish up through about seventh semester before I went. And then I had a little bit of business experience in the past. I'd been an intern before. And like I said, I was just interested in sustainability in high school. I'd started a recycling program. You know, I'd taken environmental science. 
but it was not something that I was pursu that I'm pursuing at University of Michigan. So the opportunity, like she said, is a virtual learning seminar. So over the summer, you're interacting on like kind of a C tools site that they use to just start immersing yourself in the country, and then. They take you out to New York, they actually fly you to New York, and you have a weekend immersion with the entire group of fellows from all three different countries, and then they just they send you out to Argentina. Um, when I got there, I was living in an apartment with the one other student who was on my program with me, and we were living in a really nice northern part of the neighborhood, and we just kind of lived together on our own in a, in a really great area of the city. Um, my job, I was working at the... I can't think of the Spanish word, but the like veterinary sciences faculty of the main college there that also combined with an, a sustainability NGO. So they did educational programs for people in the community, for schools, for businesses, and I ended up really working on their website and really trying to design what was kind of like your 90s archaic like pattern background website and just refresh all their communications to be a little bit more modern um, and help them attract donors to the NGO. And then the last part of this project, which we haven't mentioned yet, is the Fellows in Service project. So sort of in return for getting this incredible experience where they're paying for everything but your food, more or less, you do a service project at the end. So mine, I haven't done it yet, it's going to be next semester, but I'm actually holding a sustainability case competition through the business school. So it's really something that they want to show you put a lot of thought as to like, how can I share this experience with other people. A um, few things I did, I mean, I was... I say tourism and errands. Sometimes errands are the hardest thing of living abroad, but I took yoga classes, salsa lessons, mate is like a really, it's a cool tradition in Argentina with tea, asados is your like gigantic grill out with like friends that we met, nightlife, um, it was so much to do outside of even my job that was always fun. A <laughs> personal challenge that I was explaining for them, I got really sick in the middle of the trip and the hardest thing to do I don't know the words for cough syrup, I, they don't teach you that in class, right, you know, and like you don't know how to say like my throat hurts but to point at it, so definitely one of the harder moments of being abroad um, when like, you know, when you don't know what you're doing is sometimes trying to convey that you're sick, but getting over it's a huge accomplishment, you know, you figure out how to ask for cough syrup and you figure out how to take care of yourself and you go back to work, you know, and you feel good, but definitely something about this specific to Argentina is that cultural vistas host contacts are incredible. So the woman who did our internship placement almost ended up acting as our host mom. So when I got sick, she'd want to run over. She was always checking in on me. Her son was 21, became one of my really good friends. So specifically to Argentina, but I know all the other fellows had this awesome experience where Cultural Vistas isn't just shipping you out there. Like they've been making these connections for like over five years and like for most of the programs and they're just such great people that are really supporting you. Um, um, yeah, so like I said, I learned just to kind of keep my head up and be proud and keep asking questions even when you kind of feel like an idiot, um, which is the truth. And so professional experience, um, I was working like 10.35, uh, five days a week. Sometimes I got Fridays off, so a very typical job. I said I was doing website design, and then the really cool part was the community action environmentally. So this is a place for in Argentina, and believe it or not, they have so many volunteers, they don't know what to do with them. And that's, that's like the best problem to have, right? So really getting to help them reorganize their volunteers and reorganize how their volunteers sign up and stuff like that to make it more efficient. This is the kind of stuff that I'm, I'm interviewing right now. Sorry, I'm a little overdressed for the experience, but this is something that I'm carrying. It's been a few months into my next experiences, and everywhere I go, they go, wow, you did that, you did that. Oh, you did that in a different language, you know? You really brought people together in a language that you didn't know how to speak, and it's an like, amazing sense of pride, but it's also something that I think actually relates to almost any career field that you're going to go into eventually. Um, there were some challenges too, so working across different cultures, um, I was trying to, I was supposed to give them a perspective from the United States, so what are we doing about sustainability that's so much better? But you need to do that without saying, well, what you're doing is wrong, right? So it was also this like great lesson in how to interact with people and like take feedback, give feedback, and do so in a very culturally understanding way, and it gets easier over time, but definitely there is, there's a few faux pas at the beginning that you learn a lot from. And then this is, so this is hilarious, this is their old site. Um, it had like 10 different moving parts. I don't know if you wanted to volunteer or if you wanted to visit the reserve that they were going to. Not really sure how you would do it. And I was just able to kind of simplify it, do a blog thing, get photos up. And then La Reserva, Magote Basho up there is this really great reserve that my company was in charge of preserving. And I actually got to take a trip out to the mountains for the weekend and stay at my boss's house. And 
um, explore this place. So getting to see a different side of Argentina and bring it back together. Um, so these are some questions that I tried to answer when I was there. And then like I said, fellows in service, I mean, if any of you guys are interested in either international or international sustainability, that's going to be coming next semester. So if you want to take part, like hopefully my email will be out there and you can do part of it. Cultural Vista is just, as a summary, is like in every way, professionally, socially, culturally, culturally pushes you to the next level, but their support system is incredible. The people, my program manager, the interns who are working at Cultural Vista who are helping me, the people who are in my host contact always made me feel really safe and secure. And this was my first time in several years out of the country and definitely the first time that I was thrown in an apartment with a guy living on my own. So um, it was like a thrilling experience, so much fun, um, but I definitely felt safe and supported. And most importantly, or for me, it was financially possible. Um, okay, thank you. <laughs> And also, um, I only wanted to add to what Jamie said. Um, the fellowship I mentioned before is a very young program, um, so we do not expect, you know, uh, hundreds of applications yet this year. So the chances, you know, if you are qualified, um, if you meet the eligibility criteria, uh, chances to get into the program are still very good. So I encourage every one of you to see, you know, if your studies have anything to do with sustainability, environment. Um, if you fulfill the requirements and go ahead and apply, it doesn't really cost anything. Um, so uh, the next or the last uh, one of the fellowship programs is, or actually that's kind of a mix between a fellowship and a placement program because uh, you do pay a program fee, but you also get money um, for your internship in Germany, which would be in one of the 16 regional governments. So this, as I said before, is a program geared towards students um, with an interest or um, um, career path in, um, in government, regional government, national government, local government, um, or with an interest in um, a specific policy field, be it immigration, healthcare, environment, um, social work. So um, it's very broad, um, but uh, it does require intermediate German skills. Um, it is a pretty much two to three months program. Um, uh, there is no specific summer internship program because um, the German, the Parliament or Landtage don't really work over the summer. So um, May, June would be a summer option for you guys. And if that would interest you and if you bring the requirements, you should also apply by December 1st. Now, um, the next program um, is um, IESTA International. IESTA stands for, and let me read that, the International Association for the Exchange of Students for Technical Experience. So as the name says, this is specifically for students um, in engineering, computer science, architecture, physics, math, so everything, um, you know, even agricultural sciences, this is all considered technical. And um, the internships, or IESTA pretty much has a, a network in over 80 countries working with um, companies, but also research institutes, uh, universities, to provide internships um, for students. All the internships are paid, no matter if it is in Peru or Croatia or Germany. Um, International students are welcome to apply to this particular program. Um, you should have ideally junior level standing, although sophomores are also allowed and encouraged to apply as long as you have also some practical experience on your resume. Um, you do not have to speak a foreign language. However, some of the internship positions might not be available to you if you don't speak a foreign language. So some positions require language skills, but when you apply to the program, um, you don't have to speak any foreign language and um, the application is also entirely in English. Um, now, the way the program works is that you put in an application by December 1st. Um, you pay a $75 non-refundable application fee, and then uh, at the end of 
February, you would get access to a list of internships that are offered to, your, um, uh, to US students um, next summer. And uh, from that list, you can choose your preferred internships up to five. And the list pretty much tells you, you know, what the company is, what they pay, what the internship will be like, um, where it is. Um, and once you put in your preferences, it takes about two to three weeks until you hear from Cultural Vistas if you are nominated for one of the positions that you chose. Um, a nomination means pretty much that you get the internship. It just needs a final green light from the host company. But this is pretty much already, you know, the done deal. Um, so you will know sometime in March um, if and where you will be able to do an internship. And at that time, at the time of the nomination, you would also pay the $600 program fee. And uh, unfortunately, the, um, the student who, who wanted to come here to talk a little bit about his IESTA experience is, has a, an exam on North Campus. But um, I talked to him earlier today, and he said that the, the amazing thing about IESTA is that usually in the country where you intern, there is a local IESTA chapter, oftentimes um, at a university. So it consists of university students who really take very good care of you and integrate you into their social life. So. Um, um, that's the good thing. It's, it's pretty much a network all over the world. It's, it's one family, the Ayesta family, and um, that's something that um, you know, comes in addition to the professional experience that you get out of, of um, Ayesta. Um, another kind of programs that Cultural Vistas offers are internship placement programs, um, meaning that um, you would apply not for a specific company or a specific internship position, but you apply to the program as such, as in culture this does arranges an internship for you according to what you have on your resume and what your expectations are. Um, the summer internship program in Germany is actually a program that is specifically for University of Michigan students. So um, we, off, we have about 20 to 25 students in Germany every summer who do internships in pretty much all fields. And there is a flyer on the back table, it looks like this. And it has a um, sample placement list on, on the back here. And um, as you can see, internships are as right as you know students' backgrounds are. So um, we have engineers in the program, business majors, liberal arts students, um, um, you know, students working in hospitals, in nature reserve, in government. The tendency is that internships in, you know, the non-profit, museum, government field are unpaid, while internships in corporations and in industry are paid internships. So you get enough money that you can cover your living expenses um, uh, from the company. So this is not, not a scholarship program. Although uh, for students who get unpaid internships, um, scholarships are available through Cultural Vistas. You just need to apply for them uh, separately. Uh, you do have to speak German in order to apply. Um, about four, four, four semesters of German are required. And um, as I said, the program is a customized program for UVM students. So um, you would meet with me and the other participants a couple of times throughout the spring. And we would go over how to find housing. If your company doesn't provide housing, I would uh, point you in you know, right directions on how to find scholarships. And we would just, you know, do a lot in order to prepare you well for your time in Germany. And um, now I don't want to go over the sample placement list because you have it in print here. Um, but Luke um, was one of the participants this summer and he wants to talk about that. All right, well, um, my name is Luke Bruski. I am a senior in the Industrial and Operations Engineering Department here. Um, and I spent my summer in Schwäbisch Gmünd, Germany, um, which is a mouthful if you don't speak German, and sometimes a mouthful if you do speak German. Um, and this is a picture, uh, it doesn't really compare to what it's really like there, of where I went every day on my runs. Um, so I worked for Integrated Management Consulting, and I guess I'll delve a little bit deeper. Um, so this is, I guess, more towards people who aren't familiar with Cultural Vistas. I won't delve too far into, obviously, what the program is, because uh, Peggy just talked about it, but what they did was they set me up with an interview with a company called Integrated Management Consultant. And what I did there was um, 
I did management consulting for a set of Link Systema, which is uh, ZF steering systems, and it was an automotion, uh, uh, an automotive company half owned by Bosch and half owned by ZF. And there I got to work on lean manufacturing in the administrative area and sort of work hands-on with a lot of people in German. So um, I did a lot of VBA programming, a little bit of global aftermarket. Didn't really have much of a business background, but um, sort of my problem solving uh, the techniques they teach you in IOE here and in engineering. Uh, I got to apply there and a lot of translating. They were really excited to have a native English speaker, particularly in technological fields. Uh, they like to put everything in English just to make things easier. But So these are some really awkward pictures of me. Um, you're welcome. So <laughs> this, uh, the bottom one there is actually by the Berlin Wall. So my experience was a little bit unique because I went into this summer having three, I guess, maybe major problems. One, I had no time at all. Um, I had no money and I also really needed to fill out some graduation requirements. So, and I was determined to study abroad. So actually, I thought to myself, how can I cram this into one summer? So I did two different things. I studied at the, um, the Technical University of Berlin for the first six weeks and I did that through international programs in engineering. I don't really remember what the LSA counterpart of IPE is, but um, there's all kinds of study abroad programs, so I applied for that. Did six weeks there and crammed in six um, transfer credits, which was perfect for me. And then after that, um, I got done that Friday, had a going away barbecue at the university, and on Monday I started work in Schwäbisch Gmünd, which was about an eight hour train ride south. Um, so it was a very jam-packed uh, summer. I left two days after my last exam and got back two days before the first day of classes. So. Um, I guess the point I'm trying to make with that is don't let anyone ever tell you you can't fit it in because like I said I went there and I was I had no money like not one and even with the program where you had to pay I was able to get scholarships I was already a junior so I couldn't fit any credits in right like you, you take physics or you take as an engineer or you take all these like humanities requirements abroad but I found a program that perfectly transferred so Really, that's not a testament to me at all. I did nothing. It was Peggy, and it was Cultural Vistas, and it was IPE. So the best part about Cultural Vistas is you actually can't ask them too many questions. Um, you can think you're annoying the crap out of them, and you're really not. They love you even more. Um, so my advice, you all took a great first step of coming here, and I guess if I could offer anything, it's don't stop. Um, keep asking. If you have a weird thing that you need to get fit in, I can only take this one class or I only can work in this field because no one's going to hire me unless I work um, for a government or in a business firm. They can find something for you and um, it really turns into sort of this crazy experience. So here's Schwäbisch Gmünd. This is just the center of town. Um, it was about Ann Arbor sized. That church was built in 1200. Um, no one really seemed to think it was a big deal. Um, to me it was kind of impressive. These are some other interns I met there. So the one on the left, she speaks five languages. Um, she's from Germany. She's studying at Oxford right now. She's crazy, um, but awesome. The one on the right is another German, and um, right next to me on my so on my right is um, is a Indian student who is also exchanged there at the same time. So really, just a lot of crazy people you'd meet in this rinky-dink town in Germany. Um, and it just turned out to be something really incredible. This is another awkward picture, right? Because that's all I take. But so this is me learning how to play um, a game. I don't even remember the name of it, but it was these little, these two boys teaching me how to play this game. And I can tell you that nothing is more humbling nor more rewarding than learning in a different language, right? So I came and I took German 232. I went there and I thought, you know, I got this. I can live in like right. It's going to be hard, but it won't be that bad. And you get there and you go and try and like buy oranges at the store. And you're like, what just happened? <laughs> like, why is this so hard? <laughs> and um, so it was silly. And then these, yeah, they were trying to explain to me how to win this game. And if you can't like see the concentration on my face, it was there. <laughs> Trust me. And um, so it was just a lot of fun and a really cool experience to just, to really put yourself out there and um, to make yourself uncomfortable. Right? And I think you do a lot of cool things, you get work experience, you get working across cultural barriers, which are all incredible. Um, 
can't say enough about those, but really just making yourself uncomfortable changes everything, and you learn so much about yourself, about other people, and you can put it in just about any situation. So um, I guess I kept this presentation hopefully short and sweet, but um, like I said, there is a way to make it happen. Look for housing early. Um, my recommendation is to try to get a host family, even if you think you couldn't live with other people, and maybe it would be a horrible situation, right? But everything can be a learning experience, and when you live with a family, um, you really get a lot out of it. I actually didn't get, I got to stay with the family for a few weekends. Um, I lived in an apartment by myself. I met a lot of other people in town. It takes twice as much work and you get half the exposure, so um, I'd recommend that. Study up on the culture before you leave. So I went to Germany and I had been taking classes for a while, that was great. Um, I recommend if you're studying Spanish, go to Spanish speaking country, <laughs> right? Really put yourself to the test, but if you don't take a language, don't let that stop you from going abroad by any means. But if you decide to go to Japan, maybe look up on Japan a little bit before you go so you don't uh, walk into something and accidentally insult someone in the worst way possible. So, And finally, like I said, get uncomfortable. Um, I, you really won't regret it. So. Challenging but rewarding. I think that's pretty much what it boils down to. Um, for those of you who do not speak German or do not have a technical background and don't have any interest in sustainability or engineering, um, there is the summer internship program uh, in Spain, Argentina, and Chile. And uh, they are very similar to the program in Germany <coughs> and to the program that uh, Luke just explained a little bit more with the major um, difference that uh, internships obviously are in Spanish and not in German, but they are also all unpaid. So even internships in engineering would be unpaid in these three countries. But again, that does not mean that you would be without money um, as long as you apply for scholarships. And I uh, say a few more things about that in a second. Um, so international students are welcome to apply to this program as well. Um, the application fee is $75. Um, the program is actually run through LSNA, but engineering students are welcome to apply too, so it's not restricted to LSNA students. Um, and um, the placements here are, as I mentioned, as diverse as the students are, so business, uh, nonprofit, government, politics. Um, um, and um, we work with partner organizations in these countries who would take care of you once you arrive in Chile, Argentina, and uh, Spain. Most internships in Spain are in Madrid. Internships in Argentina are in Córdoba or Buenos Aires. And internships in Chile are in uh, Santiago de Chile. So they are a little bit restricted to these um, cities. Um, last thing I wanted to mention, because I mentioned scholarships a couple of times. Um, Culture Vistas has a scholarship fund and welcomes applications from students in Culture Vistas programs who get unpaid internships or low-paid internships. Um, also, the College of LSNA here at the University of Michigan provides scholarships. Um, typically, uh, the applications open in February, March next year, so there is no information out there yet, but um, you know it, 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 it will be available to you. The International Institute has funding every year. Um, for those of you going to Europe, um, the European Union Center or Center for European Studies provides internships, uh, in scholarships for internships. Uh, the College of Engineering um, provides travel money. Luke uh, applied and received that. Um, for those of you who are connected with the business school, um, the Center for International Business Education has funding available. Um, the German department, for all those who do an internship in Germany, we have uh, non-competitive funding, so everyone who goes to Germany is welcome to apply through that. This is typically not a cost-covering scholarship, but a couple hundred dollars to help you offset your living expenses in Germany. And also for those going to Germany, there is uh, funding available through the German-American Chamber of Commerce, um, and that will also open next, next spring. Um, for all those who work with me, uh, you will get those information in details um, at the right time. But also, you always might want to think about asking in your school or college, even if they don't have a structured scholarship program, there might be some money available that you can apply to, um, you know, if you ask the right person. And last but not least, um, 
you can get credit for internships in Germany through uh, German 351. Uh, most of you who study German know our advisor, Kali Federhofer, so he can tell you a little bit more about this, but it would, uh, signing up for German 351 in the fall semester would give you three experiential credits for your internship. And um, also um, Rachel Chryso, who is the coordinator for the internships in Spain, Argentina and Chile at, the uh, at Ellison A, um, she will be able to point you in the right direction to uh, get credit for internships in Spanish-speaking countries. So um, Jamie had to leave, she had a, an interview, so she cannot be here for some questions, but I wanted to yeah, use the last five to ten minutes to answer questions that you might have, and I'm sure Ryan and Luke would also be happy to answer your questions. Mm -hmm. If you apply early before the deadline, do you still need to wait till um, way after um, before you um, get uh, before you get an internship placement? Because if you're applying for outside of funding, usually the deadlines are in February. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, depending on the program, um, uh, is it a specific program you're talking about? Because all the programs have different time frames. Uh, Spanish right? Spanish, okay. Yeah, you would apply in, in, in January. And the thing is, um, you might not have your specific internship placement yet in February or March. Internship placements pretty much come through any time between the beginning of March and the end of April. Um, but uh, quite a lot of funders, like my Cultural Vistas, the German department, LSNA also, the International Institute, I know that if you provide a letter from Cultural Vista saying that you are in the program and what kind of an internship uh, we are trying to arrange, that would be fine. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I have students who didn't have a placement and got funding. Mm -hmm. You said the the Germany internships program, not the Iesta ones. They mm -hmm. said you said that they had a four semester of German required. Mm -hmm. uh, is that is that like a placement test equivalent of that, or does that have to be like four semesters here? Uh, no, it, it can be the equivalent. What we want to make sure for Germany and Spain uh, that you have working knowledge in German or Spanish. Um, we think four semesters of German give you that, but you know, some students have spent time in Germany and never taken a German class, that's fine too. I would just talk to you a little bit in German or ask you to talk to someone in Spanish. We have a couple of tools to measure your German skills. You know, by uh, par part of, uh, there is a, a language test in the written application. There's also a short interview involved in the application process and we would talk to you, you know, in German or Spanish for five minutes. So we have a couple of ways to test and measure your skills and we really, I mean, we want to make sure that you have a, a knowledge that's good enough that you find your way around in Germany. But other than that, we try to match the internship also to your language skills. So someone with, you know, advanced German language skills gets a different internship than someone with just four semesters of German. You know, both internships are very valuable, but we keep that in mind when we contact host companies. Thank you. Um, with the Bundestag Youth Exchange, you mentioned classes that you take. What kind of classes can you take? For the language school or at the university? Yeah, once you go to the college, not the language school. Oh, once you're at the university, it's completely up to you. All you need to get credit, I guess, from the organization to keep getting your stipend is just at the end of the year, you get a written note from three professors saying that you attended class, you know, you were there mm -hmm. X percent of the time. Um, but it's really up to you. And the college placement, they try to place you at a university applicable to what you're studying. So if you're engineering, it's an engineering school. Uh, it's not always the case, but usually 95% of the time you're at a university where you can actually get classes that you need. If not, um, it's it's entirely up to you what you take. And is um is any of that in English, those classes? Um, yeah, I think out of the three, you're supposed to take two in German and one mm -hmm. of them can be in English. Okay. Um, but every university over there, because they have such a diverse group of people from all around Europe and Eastern Europe, that almost every university has entire programs now in English. So the courses are probably 50-50. And, and you, you, you will be able to, to at least listen to German lectures after the two-month intensive language course. And the German university system is also, especially the first years, it's not focusing so much on seminars and discussion style uh, classes, but very often lectures that you just listen to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So even if you go into the program with no German skills, mm -hmm. it's doable. And this is one for Ryan, like did you go in with prior German experience or would you? I had gone up to 
German, I think 232 here. Okay. And I didn't take it for two years and then I went over there. So the first day I could say like, hey, I'm Ryan, I'm hungry and I want a beer. And that was it. <laughs> but after the two months I was fine and by the time I got to the internship I was fluent. Okay. But actually, uh, to add on to that, the people who went there with nothing actually did better because when you go over there and you know so much, you kind of fall back on that. The people that went there with nothing ended up becoming fluent within two to three months because they were starting from zero rather than I would just fall back to say what I knew how to say rather than actually trying to learn how to say something new. Questions? Do you um, to apply to Culture Visa, do you go on their website or do, is there like a specific, like do you go through Michigan to apply? Um, that's Hard question. It would probably take me an hour to answer that because every every program, you know, works different. Um, so with the summer internship in Germany program, you would pretty much work with me, very, you know. Um, but um, you can. Every program has a website, uh, and every program requires an online application. Um, so I would really recommend that you grab the materials on the back of the table. They all list the uh, program website and if you have trouble finding your way through the website you know let me know and I will direct you in the right direction mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I know you said that for the Spanish speaking internships like the placements come um, from March to April but will we know before that like okay you've been accepted and we're going to place you somewhere yeah yeah right um, uh, for the Spanish speaking programs I would say let's say middle of uh, by the middle of February, you will uh, know if you are accepted to the program. So once Culturevis has read your written application and did an interview with you, you get an acceptance letter. And this is pretty much our commitment to you. So that means um, we guarantee you an internship in the country of your choice. Um, so you can pretty much go ahead and book your flight uh, if you are trusting enough. Um, um, and then any time, as I said, between March and April, your internship will come through. I think in your case, when was it? In uh, pretty early, like end of February? Early. End of February already. Germany is a little bit earlier, but that's something that we cannot say in advance when that will be. Because mm -hmm. it depends on so many factors that are out of our hands, out of your hands. So. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, you know, we are lucky and the second company that we contact makes an offer. Sometimes we have to contact 20, 30 companies until, you know, a company makes an offer. So, mm -hmm. Okay, well, thank you all very much for coming. Um, I will stay here for a little bit, so feel free to come and ask questions.